Welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of Jerusalem. In this video, we are going to be focusing on one of the most astounding miracles that took place here in Jerusalem during the time of Hezekiah. And it's going to be an amazing miracle wherein God sends one angel to destroy 185,000 Assyrian troops who were mounted right here in this valley and all around Jerusalem to destroy it. So we're going to be looking at a little bit about Hezekiah's life and this amazing miracle that took place here. And we're also going to be showing you the wall that he built, a tunnel that he built, and how some of the city walls were built over time and how Jerusalem developed to be what it is. So a lot of information we're going to have in this video. And I'm going to be reading a fair amount of scripture in this video because it is amazing the a miracle that God does here to protect Jerusalem and a little bit about Hezekiah's life, a tremendous example for us. So I hope you enjoy this video. Now this miracle is so important and huge that God included it in three places in the Bible. It's found in 2 Kings, 2 Chronicles, and Isaiah. It's as if God doesn't want us to miss it. So be certain to pay careful attention so you can understand what God desires for us in this miracle and in this video. So at this biblical site, we'll be looking at the location of this place and why that's so important. We'll talk about the historical background of this location. We'll be looking at some of the amazing places of interest at this site. We'll see the key events in the Bible that took place here and we'll end with the faith lesson in order to learn the major lessons God desires for us from this important biblical site. So I think you'll find this video very enlightening and transforming to your life. Now there's a portion of wall that is discovered here called Hezekiah's Broad Wall. And so we're gonna be showing you Hezekiah's Broad Wall. It was a portion of a wall that Hezekiah built to defend the city uh, from the Assyrians. Now to help you better understand uh, this miracle and what took place here, we have to see a little bit about the backdrop of the story and set up the miracle so you really get the full impact of it. So the events surrounding Hezekiah during this time were breathtaking, they were difficult, and they were very, very tense. And in the midst of this, Hezekiah seeks the Lord and God protects not only him, but all of Jerusalem as well. So here's a little bit about what was happening during the time of Hezekiah. The kingdom was divided into two kingdoms after King Solomon. God sent prophet after prophet to warn them to turn them from their sinful ways and follow the Lord. However, all these warnings fell on deaf ears. Out of the 19 kings who reigned in the northern kingdom of Israel, only one king started out good, but later turned evil, and that was King Jehu. So the 19 kings who reigned in the northern tribes of Israel, only one was good and for a short time. So God sent them prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet. And because of their disobedience, God sent the Assyrians to the northern tribes to banish them, destroy them, to carry them away into Assyria. Now the northern part of Israel was finally conquered and taken into captivity by 722 BC by several kings of Assyria. It says in 2 Kings 18, then the king of Assyria carried Israel away into exile to Assyria and put them in Hala and on the Haber, the river of Goshen, and in the cities of the Medes, because they did not obey the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant. Even all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded, they would neither listen to it nor obey. So the reason why God destroyed and took away the northern ten tribes into Assyria was because of their continual, repeated disobedience. They offered their children and sacrifices to Molech, a false god, to Baal, a false god. They worshiped idols. They turned away from the true living God and followed these idols and false gods. And there was immorality, corruption. So they totally just walked away from God's principles and from the living God, Yahweh. So God punished them and sent them into captivity into Assyria in around 722 BC. Now the Assyrian army was an army to be feared and the Jews greatly feared the Assyrians because they were brutal when they conquered people and they conquered people in such a brutal way so that they would put the fear of them into the hearts of the surrounding nations and so rather than fight, 
The hope was that these nations that they were trying to conquer would just surrender to the Assyrians without a fight. Now by 701 BC, the Assyrians headed by Sennacherib invaded Judea in order to subdue it with all their vast empire. So the Assyrian army was moving south now to Jerusalem and the two southern tribes of Judah and Benjamin, mainly known as the tribe of Judah. So they were on the march, coming south, King Hezekiah was in power, and so what does he do? Now, according to an Assyrian stele found in the ruins of the royal palace of Nineveh, Sennacherib conquered 46 cities in Judea prior to attempting to conquer Jerusalem. So it was just one city after another city after another city was falling as King Sennacherib marched towards Jerusalem. And according to scripture, Sennacherib conquered all the strongholds of Judah, the southern part of Israel. It says in Isaiah 36, 1. Now in the 14th year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, marched against all the fortified cities of Judah and seized them. So when the Assyrians arrived at Jerusalem, they had an undefeated record of wiping out every city and land they invaded. So they were greatly to be feared and Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem needed God's help or they would be wiped out. Now the southern kingdom known as Judah had a mixture of good and evil kings and was on the verge of being deported because of their sinfulness as well. So the southern two tribes weren't as bad as the northern tribes. Northern tribes had 19 kings, just one was good just for a time. The southern kingdom had more good kings, but bad kings mixed in. So God had sent prophet after prophet to the southern kingdom and letting them know that they were in danger as well if they did not turn to the living God and quit their idol worship. So King Hezekiah is on the stage now, and King Hezekiah was a godly king. However, King Hezekiah's father, Ahaz, was a very, very wicked king. Speaking of King Ahaz and how wicked he was, 2 Kings 16, 3 says, But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and he made his son pass through the fire in accordance with the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had driven out before the sons of Israel. Now the phrase, passing through the fire, refers to offering children to the false god Molech. They would put their children on the arms of this statue and light a fire underneath that would consume the children. It's a miracle in and of itself that Hezekiah even lived as his father Ahaz killed a number of his sons. It says in 2 Kings 18 about Hezekiah, he did right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father David had done. So King Hezekiah was a good, godly king. So then it tells us a little bit more detail about King Hezekiah. In 2 Kings 18 it says, He trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel, so that after him there was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor among those who were before him. For he clung to the Lord, he did not depart from following him, but kept his commandments which the Lord had commanded Moses. So there was no other king like Hezekiah after or before him, but we should clarify that David is excluded because David was over all of the tribes. And this is talking about Hezekiah who was over the tribes of Judah and then the tribes after David. So David was a man after God's own heart, but Hezekiah was on par with King David. He clung to the Lord and sought the Lord and followed the Lord with all of his heart. So we're gonna see why God does this amazing miracle to Hezekiah to protect him and the southern tribes. It continues in 2 Kings 18, And the Lord was with him. Wherever he went, he prospered. And he rebelled against the king of Syria and did not serve him. So God was with Hezekiah, but Hezekiah was not willing to submit to the Assyrian king Sennacherib. And of course, that's what's going to cause the problem. Now, as King Hezekiah, who was a good and godly king, saw King Sennacherib conquering all the surrounding nations and knowing he was a target as well, he made two strategic moves to protect himself and Jerusalem. 
And of course, he sought the Lord in all of this as well, and God prospered him. He built the broad wall, named so because of its massive size. Now it surrounded the inhabitants of Jerusalem, which were outside the city during the time of King Hezekiah. So the inner walls were a lot smaller, and you can see in this video this extra wall that King Hezekiah built, and it, and it included uh, people that were living outside the city. And it's called a broad wall because it was about 22 feet wide and about 25 feet high, so it was massive in size. Now, 2 Chronicles 32, 5 speaks about this wall that Hezekiah built. It says, And he resolutely set to work and rebuild all the wall that had been broken down and erected towers on it, and built another outside wall, and strengthened the millow in the city of David, and made weapons and shields in great numbers. So this reference, and built another outside wall, refers to this broad wall that King Hezekiah built. Now if you look carefully here, you can see evidence of poorly built homes beside Hezekiah's broad wall here. In fact, when Hezekiah built the wall, he had to destroy and build over some of the homes that already existed. These were the homes of the refugees who had fled to Jerusalem during the Assyrian conquest of the northern kingdom of Israel from around 740 to 722 BC. Now there is talk of the ten lost tribes of Israel that resulted from them being deported by the Assyrians. However, this is not really true because many people from the northern ten tribes of Israel fled to Jerusalem for protection. So no one of the ten tribes were really lost. Now he also diverted Jerusalem's water source by making a tunnel from the Gihon Spring down to a pool called the Pool of Siloam inside the city walls. The tunnel is known today as Hezekiah's Tunnel and is visited by many, and you can see in this video, this tunnel. Now after defeating an Egyptian army in Judah, who were allies of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib captured dozens of cities and villages and sacked them, including the mighty city of Lachish. Now this mighty city of Lachish was the last major stronghold city that fell, and you can see remains of the Assyrian siege ramp that was used to access and destroy the city and its people. So the king of Assyria, Sennacherib, was marching from the north, but then he doubled around, and now he was coming from the south, coming up towards Jerusalem. It says in 2 Kings 18, Now in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and seized them. Then King Hezekiah of Judah sent to the king of Assyria at Lachish, and Lachish is south of Jerusalem, about 20 or 30 miles, saying, I have done wrong. Withdraw from me. Whatever you impose on me, I will bear. So the king of Assyria required of Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. Hezekiah gave him all the silver which was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house. At that time, Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and the doorpost which Hezekiah king of Judah had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. So Hezekiah says to Sennacherib king of Assyria, I've done wrong, I'm sorry, and he paid the king of Assyria from the gold from the temple, his own palace, and gave all this to Sennacherib to try to please him and cause him to withdraw from attacking Jerusalem. However, Sennacherib was not satisfied with what King Hezekiah did, and he wanted more, and so he sent some men ahead of him to threaten and to humiliate Hezekiah, and hopefully to cause him to surrender. It says in 2 Kings 18, 17, Then the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rahab Saris and Rahab Shechem from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a large army to Jerusalem. So they went up and came to Jerusalem. So Sennacherib's men uh, sent a large army, and some of Hezekiah's officials went out to meet them. Then Rahab Shechem said to them, Say now to Hezekiah, Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, what is this confidence that you have? 
you say, but they are only empty words. I have counsel and strength for war. Now on whom do you rely that you have rebelled against me? And we're going to see that these men mock the true and living God of Israel, and therefore God is going to rise up and show himself. But if you say to me, we trust in the Lord our God, is it not he whose high places and those altars Hezekiah has taken away and has said to Judah and to Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem? So he was referring to the high places that were wrong that Hezekiah had torn down and had gone back to the true worship of God in Jerusalem in the temple the way that it was commanded to be done. Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in Judean, saying, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you from my hand, nor let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, Make your peace with me and come out to me, but do not listen to Hezekiah when he misleads you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Has any one of the gods of the nations delivered his land from the hand of the great king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arphad? Where are the gods of Serphaimim and Hena and Iva? Have they delivered Samaria from my hand? Who among all the gods of the lands have delivered their land from my hand that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem from my hand? So Sennacherib's army and his officials mock Hezekiah, tell the people of Jerusalem, do not obey Hezekiah, God will not deliver you. Our gods are bigger than the God of Jerusalem, the Yahweh, the true and living God. And so they mock and taunt the people, they mock and taunt Hezekiah, and they mock and taunt God by saying that God cannot deliver Jerusalem from the hand of the mighty king Sennacherib. But we're going to see what happens. The miracle is coming real close. So in response to all of these threats, Hezekiah is under tremendous pressure and he prays to the Lord. He goes into the temple and he prays to the living God, Yahweh. And then God sends the prophet Isaiah to Hezekiah and God has words for Hezekiah through the mouth of the prophet Isaiah. He says, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid because of the words that you have heard with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will put a spirit in him so that he will hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will make him fall by the sword in his own land. So Sennacherib, through his officials, threatens Hezekiah and mocks the living God once again. So once again, Hezekiah prays and seeks the Lord regarding this. So what you see is Hezekiah is under tremendous pressure. And I just want you to visualize for a moment here. Just as you look over the city here, think of the valley below, just think of all around the city. You can see now where the Dome of the Rock is. That's where the original temple approximately stood. Hezekiah is there. He's also down towards the city of David. And you've got these thousands, probably around 200,000 soldiers are all around this city. These soldiers are everywhere. And just think of Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem inside this city knowing that the Assyrians have wiped out 46 cities. Israel's no match for them. So the king of Assyria is the world power at that time. And Sennacherib has all the maximum power. And he's just crushing city after city after city. And here's Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem, just a small, small grain in the bucket compared to the king of Assyria and his power. So Hezekiah is under tremendous pressure. But during this tremendous pressure, what is Hezekiah doing? He is constantly praying. He is constantly seeking the Lord. What a great and awesome lesson for us today in the midst of our problems. And we face nothing like what King Hezekiah faced. Not only his own life, his family, but the whole nation of Israel. So he is in tremendous pressure. And so he's praying to the Lord and seeking the Lord. And the King Sennacherib keeps threatening him and keeps mocking the God of Israel. So God sends Isaiah the prophet again to King Hezekiah to 
give him another word of the Lord to tell him what's going to happen. And it says in 2 Kings 19, Therefore thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He will not come to this city, nor shoot an arrow there. And he will not come before it with a shield or throw up a siege ramp against it. By the way that he came, by the same way he will return. And he shall not come to this city, declares the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. So God says, I'm going to defend it. And because Hezekiah has prayed, because of David's godliness, God is going to defend Hezekiah and David's lineage in Jerusalem for a time. So what a lesson for us as well. If we walk with the Lord and we obey the Lord and we trust in the Lord, God will defend us and he will take care of us. Not that we won't have persecution, but God will be with us and help us in our time of need, like he was with King Hezekiah. So now let's see what happens here. Here's the miracle we have been waiting for. So just picture now all of Jerusalem surrounded by around 200,000 soldiers of King Sennacherib. And now let's see what's going to happen. Let's see the miracle. It says in 2 Kings 19:35, Then it happened that night that the angel of the Lord went out and struck 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. And when they rose early in the morning, behold, all of them were dead. There are some who believe the reference to the angel of the Lord refers to what is called a theophany, which is a special appearance of God. Some believe it refers to Christ in the Old Testament, and others believe it refers to one of the principal angels or just an angel in general. We don't know for certain because scripture doesn't really say. However, what we do know is that this angel, or whoever it was, was an extremely powerful being, and that angels are granted power in abundance from God. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and returned home and lived at Nineveh. It came about as he was worshiping in the house of Nisroch, his god, that Adrimelech and Sharaser killed him with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Ararat, and Esgarhaddon, his son, became king in his own place. Now let's think for a moment about Sennacherib and his death. He was the most powerful person in the world who had everything. Yet, because he mocked God and his power, God supernaturally defeated him and his army and reduced him to a humiliating death. God will always have the last word, and for those who attack God, His word, His power, and His existence, they will one day be reduced to destruction just like Sennacherib. So God sent one angel and killed 185,000 of the Assyrian army, and then a few with King Sennacherib fled back home to Nineveh. One angel. Now interestingly, when Christ was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying, he said, if I wanted to, I could call for 12 legions of angels. So Hezekiah trusted in the Lord. God saved him and saved the city. And he sent an angel who killed 185,000 right here. So just imagine all around Jerusalem, 185,000 soldiers now dead just because of one angel. So God is able to protect those who call upon him. So what lessons can we learn from the life of Hezekiah? Well, Hezekiah had a wicked father. He had a wicked upbringing, so to speak. His father was King Ahaz, who was a very wicked king. But Hezekiah, unlike his father, served the Lord and trusted in the Lord. So what about us? It does not matter what our lineage is. It doesn't matter who our parents are. We can follow the Lord. God's grace is sufficient for us to help us in whatever time of need we have, like King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah had a wicked father. You might have wicked parents, ungodly parents. Does not matter. God's grace is more than sufficient, and He can help you, and you can serve the living God, Yahweh, like King Hezekiah did. The next faith lesson is that when Hezekiah saw the imminent danger of Assyria, he showed wisdom and began making preparations to protect those God had entrusted to his care. 
He built a wall around the west side of the city to enclose and protect the refugees from the northern ten tribes of Israel and built a water tunnel known today as Hezekiah's Tunnel that diverted the water from the Gihon Spring to the lower part of the city, thereby keeping the water supply inside the city. Now it appears that at the beginning of Hezekiah's hurry to protect himself and those in Jerusalem that he neglected to trust in the Lord for a bit. As a result, the prophet Isaiah was sent by the Lord to rebuke Hezekiah and remind him that without fully depending upon God, all he was doing was in vain. Isaiah 22, 9 through 11 says, And you, speaking about Hezekiah, saw that the breaches in the wall of the city of David were many, and you collected the waters of the lower pool, this refers to the pool of Siloam, then you counted the houses of Jerusalem and tore down houses to fortify the wall. This refers to Hezekiah's broad wall that encompassed all the refugees on the western hill. And you made a reservoir between the two walls for the waters of the old pool, but you did not depend on him who made it, nor did you take into consideration him who planned it long ago. So here we see through the Lord Isaiah rebuking King Hezekiah for not depending upon God in the beginning of this initial work and all that he was doing. However, we can see through Scripture in 2 Chronicles 32, 5-8 that Hezekiah repented of his sin and took to heart what God had told him through the prophet Isaiah. We read about this in 2 Chronicles 32, 5-8. It says, And he resolutely, talking about Hezekiah, set to work and rebuild all the wall that had been broken down and erected towers on it, and built another outside wall, this refers to Hezekiah's broad wall, and strengthened the millow and the city of David, and made weapons and shields in great numbers. He appointed military officers, once again talking about Hezekiah, over the people and gathered them to him in the public square at the city gate. So he gathers everyone together and it says, and spoke encouragingly to them saying, now here we can see why Hezekiah received the rebuke from Isaiah the prophet. It says in verse seven, be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be dismayed because of the king of Assyria, nor because of all of the horde or the multitude of people with him. For the one, talking about God, with us is greater than the one with him, talking about Sennacherib. With him is only an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people relied on the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. We can see by Hezekiah's words that he had repented of his lack of trust and dependence on the Lord and took to heart what God had told him. Another faith lesson we can learn from this is that without God, all our plans are in vain. We can try and protect ourselves from future problems, but it is only God that can truly protect and help us. We need to trust in the Lord and depend on Him in all that we do. We need to take action and do something, but we need to include God in all that we do and our plans. Now because Hezekiah sought the Lord and was godly, God performed a miracle and protected Hezekiah and all in Jerusalem, but nonetheless it was wise and compassionate what Hezekiah did. Proverbs 27, 12 says, A prudent person or a wise person sees evil and hides himself. But the naive or the simple person, the unwise person, proceed and pay the penalty. What about us? Are we prudent and wise like Hezekiah and prepare for the evil that might come our way? Do we know God's word so we can protect ourselves from the lies of Satan and this world? Do we work hard to provide for ourselves and our families? Are we wise with our finances and save money for difficult times that may come our way? If we are wise, we will do these things. Another faith lesson is that this amazing miracle 
also is a picture of salvation by grace. There was nothing Hezekiah and his people could do to save themselves. They were no match for Assyria. As mentioned earlier, Assyria had an undefeated record of destroying every city and land when they arrived at Jerusalem. However, God did the work and saved those in Jerusalem. It's the same for us. We are saved by grace and we walk by grace. We need God to save us and we need Him to empower us to walk with Him and obey Him. So do we seek the Lord and do we seek to walk with Him and are we like Hezekiah who is wise and prudent in all that we do? Now there are two important prophecies that have been fulfilled regarding this place that I would like to share with you. The first deals with how the nation of Assyria would fill the land of Israel and reach up to its neck because of Israel and Judah's disobedience to God. Isaiah 8, 7 and 8 says, Now therefore, behold, the Lord is about to bring on them, talking about Israel, the strong and abundant waters of the Euphrates River, that is, the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria is the Euphrates River in this prophecy, and all its glory. And it will rise over all its channels and go over all its banks. Then it will sweep on into Judah. So it swept and took all of the northern ten tribes, and now it's going to overflow its banks and go to Judah. It will overflow and pass through. It will reach as far as the neck, this is talking about Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, will reach as far as the neck, and the spread of its wings will fill the expanse of your land, Emmanuel. So the neck refers to coming right up to the head, and the head is Jerusalem. So Sennacherib was able to come right up to the neck, but wasn't able to get the head, which is Jerusalem. So what we see here at Hezekiah's broad wall is this prophecy fulfilled. Assyria got as far as the neck, but they didn't get the head of Israel, which is Jerusalem. The second prophecy talks about how one day Jerusalem would enjoy peace for all. Zechariah 8, 4 and 5 says, The Lord of armies says this, Old men and old women will again sit in the public squares of Jerusalem, each person with his staff in his hand because of his age. And the public squares of the city will be filled with boys and girls playing in its squares. Interestingly, right beside this place of Hezekiah's broad wall that is exposed here, there is a playground where boys and girls play today in its squares. So an additional faith lesson that we can learn about this place is that the Bible has prophecy like no other writings. This proves the Bible is true. We should have all the confidence in the world that God's Word is true and we can trust it fully. And lastly, King Hezekiah, as we have noted, trusted in God. During the good times, he sought the Lord. During the difficult times, he sought the Lord even more, and God heard him and delivered him and the city of Jerusalem out of the hands of the king of Assyria. So, tremendous lessons we can learn from the life of Hezekiah. He had wicked parents, he still trusted and served the Lord. And during whatever time in his life, he sought the Lord and he clung to the Lord like no other king before or after him. So anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you for watching and God bless.